morning, this is Darren Benson with Performance Motor Coaches in Texas. Wanted to do a short film on a 2020 show hauler here. Uh, apologize for some of the noise in the back. We do have Bluetooth microphones coming in, so hopefully that eliminates some of the noise on the future videos. Of course, we're right along the highway, so get a fair amount of traffic up and down, so apologize for that noise in advance. Uh, this unit is on a 2020 Freightliner Cascadia. It's equipped with a 600 horsepower Detroit diesel. It's 15.6 liters, 600 horsepower, and 1,850 foot pounds of torque. It is equipped with an Allison six-speed transmission. Uh, so I kind of wanted to try some different transmissions, uh, let people feel the difference between the Detroit transmission and the Allison. The Allison is a much smoother transmission. Uh, it shifts a lot smoother. It shifts a lot quicker, so a lot more acceleration with the Allison. But it's kind of different starts for different folks. Uh, but we'll kind of walk through everything. Uh, this unit is uh, has two full baths. It has bunk beds. Um, basically, essentially sleeping for seven or eight, kind of depending upon you know, how tidy everyone wants to get. Uh, white in color, which is the standard color. Truck comes white. Uh, the conversion comes in white. Uh, total uh, four slides on this. Uh, very easy coach to maneuver driving up and down the road. Uh, this is one of my favorite floor plans for large groups of people because it has the bunk beds and two baths. We'll just kind of walk through everything. Uh, we're in the showroom, which we're kind of packed in right now. Um, so apologize for not being able to get some wide vantage points and such. We did powder coat all the wheels. It kind of has a blackout package on it. Um, all the windows themselves are uh, double pane windows. They're frameless windows as well. Uh, it just kind of gives a little bit of sleeker look. It's pretty much all the business uh, generator Black water tanks, free water tanks, they're all on this side of the coach. Uh, all your batteries on this side of the coach. And uh, pretty hard to try to get all the open storage on the opposing side. Uh, we'll walk through here on the back side. As a 30,000 pound hitch assembly right here, the hitch itself is rated at 40,000 pounds. We generally well, the two inch receiver below there for people that are flat toe on a car, just have like a two inch ball receiver to stick in there. There's a 50 amp buddy plug there on the back as well. Uh, check out this ladder. This is not what you see on most RVs. Most RV ladders are similar to what you would see on this toy hauler over here. All screwed together. Um, just lots of potentials for sliding down that ladder and have a lot of issues. These are super stout. Uh, so if you're a bigger guy, get up and down the ladder without having to worry about demolishing the ladder. Uh, if you want to mount things to it, bicycle racks, you'll do a good job. About the only storage compartment that I'm going to open for you guys on this side is the hydronic heater. So uh, we get a lot of people that are still a little confused on the way that this system operates. Essentially this is a diesel fired boiler. Uh, it heats coolant and then coolant and then is then circulated throughout the motorhome itself. Um, so you have a front zone and a rear zone and then uh, as the coolant is heated, then it's circulated throughout the coach into little heat registers, just like a heater core, what you'd have in a car or a boat underneath your tow kicks. So it takes up minimal amount of room. Uh, it's diesel. So as long as you got diesel in your truck, you got heat. Uh, it does work to heat your domestic water as well. Um, does a phenomenal job, especially with two full bathrooms in there. Uh, you'll find that you can actually use both showers at, at the same time and, and, and everyone will have nice warm water. Uh, just my preference. Um, I feel like it's a little bit safer, uh, but I pretty much push the hydronic system on almost all units. Uh, Oasis is a little bit smaller company, or actually it's ITR. Uh, a little bit smaller company than Aqua Hot. Uh, a lot better customer service, a uh, lot better built unit. Um, just have really good luck with these and definitely start spending this kind of money. Uh, you'll find that units without it are difficult sales after the fact. So everything else is just all open storage. Uh, we've got that slid in just because you know we knew it would be a little tight through here. Uh, lots of Nice lights at night and such to be able to guide you through. We didn't turn these on, but your security lights and such down the sides here. Uh, 32 inch outdoor TV. It does have a sound bar on the bottom there that's Bluetooth. 
Um, so you can use that off your phone and such. Uh, this will Bluetooth back to the uh, TV as well. Outdoor TV will work off of your DVD, DVD player. It'll also operate off of your satellite uh, as well. It'll run off the front zone. So if someone's there in the back watching something different, you can watch two different things on your satellite. Uh, just regular side mounted awning. Uh, the rooftop awnings, they look great. The issue with the rooftop awnings is these coaches are so tall uh, that a lot of wind gets up underneath those and pushes them around. Uh, and realistically, unless your sun's right overhead, they don't do a very good job. So uh, while I really like the rooftop awnings because of the way they look and hide everything up top, uh, they really don't do a good job, especially in our neck of the woods where it's consistently windy all the time. Um, you've heard me brag about these entry doors. Uh, probably won't stop anytime soon. It's just so much nicer than uh, what most of the manufacturers are using. Very, very stout. Uh, even the screen door. You know, so people have dogs and such. You know, dog goes scratching on that. Then we'll get in the screen. Um, you know, if you come up and kick the door on accident, you're not going to knock the screen out of itself. Uh, everything is super, super stout. Just something when you start building a unit of this caliber, price wise, and the all steel construction, uh, it's something you want. You don't want just a regular standard entry door. So we're we'll going to come on inside. I kind of scoot this ladder over. I'm bad about not talking about the cabs much at all. Uh, a lot of people that have said hey show us more of the cab so I'll step in here um, decided not to carpet the cab on this just don't do solely to kind of figure uh, more families more potential racers uh, not to get the carpet dirty and such so pretty easy to get in and out of here even with the bunk over uh, you'll notice most of the manufacturers their cab opening is gonna be about right here there's a lot more opening here uh, just it makes it good for somebody that's older. Uh, I mean, I'm not old and uh, I can duck down, but it just, it just makes it more convenient to be able to come through here. Uh, and Show Hall is the only manufacturer of these truck chassis motorhomes that's able to cut into the cab the way that they do. So real easy to get in. Uh, the seats themselves do turn around, so you can bring a portion of the cab back to your RV. Uh, very easy as far as the dash layout and such. Very easy to drive. Um, of course, you've got uh, telescoping and uh, tilt wheel here. Uh, see down the coach, this particular unit does have the hood mirrors as well. Uh, so pretty much while you're driving, you get a full vantage point. Uh, we generally install a uh, aftermarket GPS and monitor for your rear view camera there. So just a full vantage point all the way around. Very easy to drive up and down the road. This does have some of the uh, like the collision avoidance system, the uh, adaptive cruise, it does have uh, lane departure warning and it does have uh, blind spot monitoring as well. I've done another video that kind of highlighted all those things all in one. Uh, but just really continue to be happy with the Cascadia. Uh, the new Cascadia is coming on down the pipeline. Uh, it's probably about a year away from total completion as far as available units themselves. Um, uh, nice thing, the new Cascadia is actually the exact same cab. Uh, different door skins, different hood of course, and different uh, dash and door panels. Um, so uh, for those people that are kind of interested one way or the other, as far as the placement of things, um, it's going to be the exact same size. Uh, we'll be able to do the exact same cutout on the new Cascadia as far as this large cutout here. And for the people that want the fiberglass cap, we can use that same show hauler integrated fiberglass cap on the new Cascadia as well. So we'll kind of flop around here. Uh, really nice tile floors. Uh, show hauler does a phenomenal job at doing tile floors. Because of the construction of their floors, they have a one piece floor that slid in from front to back. Uh, very little movement in the floor whatsoever. Uh, knock on wood, I've not had any customers with broken tile floors whatsoever. Uh, I've got them, these rigs into some kind of funky binds and such, uh, never popped any tile floors. Um, just makes them easier to clean, makes them look a little bit nicer. And of course, with this particular floor plan right here, it makes the unit seem much larger, much longer inside, just because of the, you know, the fact of the tile going long, you know, lengthways. Um, of course, we can do any tile that somebody might want. Uh, this is kind of my preference, this wood look tile. Uh, 
uh, just a little bit more robust, doesn't serve scratches. If you have dogs, if you have rocks and such in your shoes, the high polish stuff, in my particular opinion, uh, is a little out there, it gets slick, um, shows a lot of scratches and imperfections. Um, we'll go over this side first, a ton of storage. So all the way up and down, uh, you got your upper storage. We got storage underneath here. These are monitors. The dinette itself is fixed. Uh, we can build them with convertible dinettes. The issue with the convertible dinettes, there again, just my particular preference, they seem to rattle quite a bit driving up and down the road. I've driven plenty of diesel pushers, super C's with the convertible dinettes, and just little rattles and such kind of drive me crazy driving up and down the road. So that's my preference. It could be changed after the fact. We could change this thing tomorrow for somebody that wanted. We would have to get rid of the granite countertop because of the weight. Uh, we could just do a simple wooden uh, uh, countertop there, tabletop. Um, over here, this will lay flat. I won't, I'll just put this up here so you can kind of get the idea. This will lay completely flat, jackknife. Uh, there again, preference-wise, uh, most people won't put two people on the fold-out couch. They'll just stick one person. So this is kind of my favorite. Um, if wife, kids kind of laying around, they can actually lay on that, drive them down the road. You don't have to have the slide out to pull this completely out. Um, this, yeah, there again, just kind of a preference. 54-inch um, bunk over over the top. We got that earlier. Um, good for two people. Um, that don't mind sleeping somewhat close. There's some large cabinets over on the right hand side as well. Uh, nice size kitchen here. Um, I'll go to my, my kind of first go to and that's the trash can. Uh, it's amazing the number of people out there that tie trash bags to the side of their um, cabinets and I just that's that's kind of my thing is I want to do a uh, pull out trash can in every single one of them um, you know, trying to get them bigger, nicer. Um, Show all does a good job at. Uh, we went kind of went away from the the prepackaged ones from uh, you know the container store and whatnot, and just had them build a really nice wooden wooden one with the same drawer glides. Um, so that's pretty handy. That's that's kind of my go-to on every single one of them. Uh, lots more storage all the way around. Be tough to kind of see everything in here, but. Um, I'll highlight the drawers themselves. We'll pull out cutting board there. You can get in here and see this. Uh, but the drawers themselves are a dovetail. And that's just pretty amazing to see that. Um, I don't care where you go to look at RVs. Uh, you pretty much won't find that in the industry whatsoever. Uh, you can go look at half million dollar diesel pushers and above, and you'll generally see stapled together drawers. Those are all soft closed as well. Get everything closed up here. Uh, show Hall generally kind of puts the interior business right here. Uh, of course, it's a matter of preference. We can put these uh, controls. Uh, that's just roll the controller. Uh, you can operate your water pump, uh, the hydronic system back there, the diesel fired hydronic system. Um, uh, the controller is right there, um, so just kind of get it in a central location. Uh, does have surround sound, has Bluetooth as well, uh, in motion satellite with two different receivers for the front and rear. Uh, 40 inch TV, so the 32 outside, 40 there, and a 32 inch in the back. They're all 4K uh, Samsung smart TVs. As far as the refrigerator. This is probably my number one uh, install as far as refrigerators themselves. This is a Samsung 18 cubic foot. Uh, just makes it easier to get. The reason why I like the uh, French doors over a conventional side swing is if you're a little bit tighter uh, with a slide in, you don't have this big door that opens. Um, of course, you know, they do, do a pretty good job doing a lock mechanism. It just looks a little bit classier. Uh, we install a fair amount of these in our service department for people that are jumping from the RV refrigerators over the residential. Uh, these consume very little power. Um, so if you're people that are kind of worried about consuming a fair amount of battery power, um, they, they do a fair amount of idling. Uh, so really and truly, um, I think you'll find that uh, it really doesn't chew up too much battery power uh, if you're just using the inverter itself. Of course, it does have solar up top, 
this particular unit has 380 watt panels, so it'll do a good job to keep you know, keep you uh, powered without having to run your generator or be plugged in. Um, back here, we do have a washer dryer. Uh, this is the first unit that we have been able to kind of get everything piled in doing a uh, doing two full baths, doing the bunk beds, um, and we were able to kind of finally get everything squeezed in to do the washer dryer, do the stack washer dryer. Uh, if somebody says, I don't want to give up the room, we can easily pull that out and do hanging storage right there. Um, come back to the first bath. Uh, pretty good amount of room. Uh, for somebody that's seen me in the past, I am a little over six foot tall, right at 200 pounds. I'm gonna walk in here and kind of show you how much room there is for a bigger guy. So I can walk through here. There's a ton of room right here, all the way through and through. Um, even plopping down the toilet itself. Um, I've got a fair amount of room here. I'm not up against any walls whatsoever. Same for the shower. It's a fair amount of room in the shower itself. All the way around, uh, there's a ton of room. A little shower end set for shampoo and conditioner. Uh, if you'll see most units that I build, we just do a fan above the showers as opposed to a uh, skylight. Skylights are generally the first to leak. Um, we were, we replaced quite a few of them in our service department uh, just because they're generally the first to start cracking out and breaking and such. A fair amount of storage here. Um, we're trying to do more lighting underneath your cabinets and such just to kind of give a little bit warmer look. Uh, when you walk in your bathrooms and around your cabinets and such. Uh, the bunk beds themselves are close to 80 inches. They're 79 inch bunk beds. So uh, if you're not a kid, if you're a full size adult, you can lay down on these bunk beds. Still have a fair amount of room. Um, we typically don't put flip down DVD players. Uh, at this day and age, pretty much find people either on their phones, kids are on their iPads. Uh, so can we do flip down DVD players? Absolutely. Uh, but just kind of in general, we generally spec them without them. Uh, inside we'll have a 110 plug with a USB in the middle of the 110 plug. And pretty much anywhere you sit, anywhere you sleep, you'll see a uh, USB within the 110 plug itself. Uh, central back down there, I don't know if you caught the tools that were in that other uh, underneath the the dinette there, but central back there, more storage here. Um, you can back up a little bit. I want to show everybody how much room you have here. Uh, this is a tremendous amount of room. We're really pushing uh, to get doorways a little bit wider. It just makes them feel much larger. Um, basically brought this and cased in just the wall itself as opposed to having this particular portion stick out. Uh, inches make huge differences in RVs. So really pushing to kind of make things feel much, much larger. Uh, the slide, of course, we had uh, closed just to be able to walk through on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and open up this slide. So bear with me for a second. And I want to show you how much room you have to walk through the bedroom itself. There's basically no jogging around the bed. And there again, I don't care whose RV you're looking at, but you will pretty much have to jog around the RV itself. There's going to be a ton of room here. So on any truck chassis itself, I'll let this stop before I start talking again. So on any truck chassis itself, um, the water tanks will be below the bed. Uh, we worked with show hauler to um, so prior to, we had the water tanks and then we had the a, a hydronic register underneath the bed. And the hydronic register, by the time you do all the plumbing, sticks out. Uh, it's about, about that much depth. Um, and so that uh, made, made the bed bases come out to about right here. We're able to take and move one register and put it next to the bed. Um, so we're able to save that much room. This is This is the first one that I've had. Uh, with this particular setup. Of course, I've got another one in stock with the same setup, but it just makes a huge difference to be able to walk around and not have it so tight around here. Uh, for those people that 
don't want an opposing slide across from the bed. Um, you know, you could even do these cabinets still have decent room uh, with that not being a slide out whatsoever. Um, open up the closets on each side. Of course, we've got storage down below as well. So that's what I'm saying, kind of highlighting some of the, the lighting underneath the cabinets and such. TV does flip up. Uh, keep in mind that for those that want to build something custom, we can do any configuration of cabinets. If you say, hey, Darren, I want, I want my TV over here, or I want, you know, massive closet, or I want no TV. Essentially, every single cabinet you see in any show hauler can be totally custom designed for somebody's preference. So, um, you know, if somebody says, you know, I want, I want an entire, uh, you know, countertop here. Uh, maybe you put, put plants, maybe to put pictures. Um, you know, anything could be custom designed for, you know, anybody's preference. Um, take a flop back around, talk about the beds. And there again, preference on my behalf. Uh, this particular bed itself is 66 inches wide. People get pretty hung up on the size of beds. It's like, well, king, queen, RV king, RV queen, and they just get themselves confused. Uh, but ultimately, in the RV world, you have three different sizes of beds. You've got a 60-inch wide bed, you've got a 66-inch wide bed, and you have a 72-inch wide bed. There again, my preference is to, is to do the 66, just to not chew up so much room uh, in your RV because that's generally what everybody's after is they're trying to get as much, many things they can in the, you know, in the smallest RV possible. So uh, 66 does a good job for people that are used to a king size bed in their home. I find that me being used to a king size bed in my home, I can't sleep on a queen comfortably. But this is a good trade off where you still have a fair amount of room, you can flop around and not get uh, you know next to your partner, not feel like you're about to fall off the edge of the bed. Um, can this particular unit be built with a 72 inch wide bed? Absolutely. There's just going to be less spacing around the bed itself. And that's one thing that Show Holland works really hard on is having ample around, ample room around the bed itself. I kind of flopped through here. Um, you know, I can walk through here and not be tight. There's a lot of manufacturers out there that you will have to come around the bed and you're going to have to do this number to get in and out of bed. Uh, there's a lot more room. Typically, about the minimum we do is about 16 inches around the side of the bed. I've seen plenty of manufacturers do 11 to 12 inches, and that's just simply not enough room to comfortably get around the bed, to make the bed, to get in and out of the bed as well. Come back here to the back. Bathroom. Uh, this particular bathroom is 41 inches in depth. Um, we've built some 48, 41. This is typically about the smallest depth that I would like in a bathroom. Um, I've seen them in, at 36 inches in depth, and they're just too darn tight. Um, you really can't get in here. Uh, you know, you start pulling out the cabinets, but it, they just feel very claustrophobic, in my opinion. So 41 does a good job. There again, you can plop down on the toilet, um, not have anything hitting you off on either side. Uh, the, this particular uh, countertop right here, um, typically show hauler builds this with just a freestanding cabinet uh, with an open spot right here. There again, my preference. It's just nice to be able to, um, if you have any female traveling with you, uh, wants to be able to pull her stuff out and kind of get it laid out. This is a must right here to be able to have more countertop space and such. I'll talk about the vessel bowls and why my preference on the vessel bowls. I don't have vessel bowls in my home. The reason why I like them in RVs is it gives you more storage underneath. Uh, it allows a larger area. I'm a OCD clean freak, so uh, I hate water spots on ca on cabinets and such. Um, I hate the you know the idea of maybe washing my hands here and getting water all the way around here. Um, if you want to be able to wash your face, this basin is really large, so you can wash your face over it and not make a mess around there. So that's why you'll see a lot of, of the vessel bowls in a lot of my builds and pretty much in a lot of show haulers in general. That's kind of the idea. It's just a little bit more space you know, conservation. Um, here's more storage. 
talked about this in some of the previous videos, um, but I will bring on a little bit more. <clears throat> um, this unit itself, well, show hauler pretty much on all units, they do a really good job at making the wiring simple. So essentially, um, all these components right here will operate off of your generator or shore power. And then anything that runs off the inverter is run through here. So they wire this such what if you're plugged in your range generator, you have a 30 amp circuit that runs to your inverter. And then you have the power from your inverter that comes back up and goes in this panel right here. So I get people that say, what all runs off the inverter? So what, what can I run without having to run the generator itself or be plugged in? Basically your refrigerator, your microwave, uh, your kitchen plugs, uh, pretty much any plug where you sleep. So the bunk over, um, all your televisions, uh, front and rear, your outdoor TV, uh, your awning, anything that you know you would say, well, I really don't want to have to run my generator to be able to operate that. That's how it's all wired. Uh, can that be changed after the fact? Yes, it, you know, every, any of this could be changed, uh, but it's pretty nice to be able to go, um, you know, charge a phone wherever you want, all, all solely off your inverter itself. I get some people that ask, why do you have the separate panel whenever you have your main panel right here? Uh, the answer is it just gets this gets completely full uh, with three air conditioners, that 50 amp plug on the back to be able to plug a trailer in or whatever. It just simply gets full itself. So uh, that's the reason why they put this secondary panel right here. The all the cabinetry in this is all a charcoal stained maple. Um, the walls themselves are a a gray vinyl soft touch uh, upper and lower the ceiling is an ivory so it's kind of a kind of an off-white uh, just kind of gives it a little bit different look but more modern look of course with the subway tile and such I'm pretty happy with the way the colors turned out here um, uh, we'll walk back up front try to figure out anything that I might have forgotten of course three rooftop air conditioners they're all 15,000 BTU they do have heat strips in them as well you can see a little generator start switch right there. Something I like to do on all units. Just if you don't want to have to you know, get out of bed, you can start your generator uh, while, while you're right there at bed. The inverter controller panel <clears throat> is right here. Uh, we use a Xantrex. It's a 3000 watt power inverter. So it does a good job at powering everything. You can run your microwave. You can have plugs going on and whatnot uh, all off the inverter. The cool thing about the Xantrex inverter is it has auto generator start. So with auto generator start, uh, you can leave the coach. If you get into a low voltage situation, it'll automatically start your generator. Additionally, we have integrated the thermostats to them as well. So if you leave the coach 65 degrees in the morning, you know, it's going to be 85 in the afternoon. You want to come back to a, you know, somewhat of a cool coach, uh, set your thermostats, say on, you know, 70, 75 degrees, uh, whenever the, temperature inside the coach reaches uh, whatever your thermostats are set at it will auto automatically start your generator cool the coach and then keep the keep the coach cool uh, throughout the day without having to run the generator constantly so pretty happy with that uh, for people that have pets and such it makes it pretty darn handy uh, to not have to run the generator all the time but have a little extra extra little bit of safety involved to keep the coach cool I think that's pretty much it guys uh, i think we pretty much highlighted most uh, of everything about this particular show hauler themselves of course make sure you guys look at some of my other videos uh, we we've talked about show haulers we've talked about other units um, even some of the cool four-wheel drives that i've done in the past um, i have a video specific about the hydronic system and it kind of gets more involved at um, how that the individual components involved in that and then the placement of all those um, we will be in Tampa later on today for the Tampa RV show. Come by and see us, uh, Sean from uh, Performance RV, and then the guys from Dillon's in New Jersey will also be there. Of course, Bob from the factory, he'll be there. Uh, come by and see us, talk to us. We'll be happy to kind of pull these coaches apart, show you components of what makes the show hauler different, what makes the cabinetry different. Um, of course, we didn't get into it, but you know, fully welded steel frame. If you go out to Tampa, you're gonna look at hundreds, 
upon hundreds of RVs. They're all fiberglass, they're all screwed together. The show hauler is different. They're all welded steel. So uh, that's something we couldn't necessarily show you when you come out there, uh, but we have a ton of pictures. I've got my um, Apple TV. We can uh, throw pictures on TVs and such for you to be able to see all that. Come out and see us. Uh, that show will be all week long. Uh, today is Tuesday. Actually, she starts uh, tomorrow, industry day to day. So Wednesday through Sunday, we'll be out there. Bob will be there. And then look for us at the Dallas Super Show in mid-February. And then we will have a brand new coach, uh, pretty cool floor plan for the Family Motor Coach Show out in Tucson in March. Make sure you like and subscribe. Appreciate it.